Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a look sort of inspired by what you might want to wear for New Year's Eve. Um, I love to do a really nice dramatic look on New Year's Eve and I also love to use glitter so I've done both of those things today and I've chosen purple as my colour because the 2018 colour of the year is Pantone apparently which is a violet colour and I don't follow that stuff but it just inspired me. So <laughs> this is what I've done and I really like it so if you would like to see how I did it then just keep on watching. Alright this is a rare occasion where I'm actually going to show you how I do my foundation, my full foundation routine because New Year's Eve is obviously an event where you would like your foundation to last a very long time and to stand up to all kinds of caper that you might be getting up to. <laughs> so that's one reason and the other reason is because I am going to be doing a messy, blown out, dark, excessive eye and when you're going for something like that it is a very good idea to do that before your foundation so that you don't get any fallout and so that generally the mess that you make is a lot easier to clean up. So I've got absolutely nothing on my face at the moment except for moisturiser and I'm going to start off by putting a concealer all over my eye on top and underneath. I'm going to be using the Maybelline Age Rewind Concealer. I'm going to make sure that I get in this inner corner here because that's where I carry a lot of my darkness and out on this outer corner here and then I'm just going to come underneath a teeny bit because we'll be cleaning up under there but still just like to give a nice blank canvas to work on. This is not technically my primer because I am actually going to be using a primer later on so I'm just going to take a little brush to make sure that that's all smooth. I'm a big fan of having the base wherever the shadow isn't nice and bright. I'm quite fair so for me I like to take a pretty light shadow and in this case because the look is going to be really dark I'm actually going to take a white shadow. This one's White Lies by Makeup Geek. I'm going to take that on a flat fluffy brush. I'm going to start off by setting in here and then from crease to brow bone. And when you're doing a really intense look you definitely want to get a really good powder base on here because it's just going to make the blending so much easier and everything's going to look a lot less choppy and much smoother and just life will be better. I'm going to come out quite far here too. Um, I'm not sure how far we will end up leaving it because we will clean up with a white at some point but you might as well bring it out nice and far to start off with because again it's just all things that you can blend into. And then I will run this on the lower lash line, just really to set where we put that concealer down there. So my first crease shade, sort of blending transition shade is going to be by Makeup Geek as well. It's called Unexpected and it's a lilac in maroon color. I'm going to take that on the fluffy end of my Eco Tools brush and I'm going to put it here. I'm ending where my eyebrow ends pretty much, this shadow for the minute. I'm bringing it quite high, I'm really only just leaving a very small gap between my eyebrow and this eyeshadow. Okay, so the general shape that I'm following is just the shape of my eyebrow along here, ending at sort of where my eyebrow ends and coming nice and low at the bottom here and then we'll leave it just like that and off you go. Take yourself a nice big fluffy blending brush this is a Morphe MB25 and just go over the edges and really blend this out. When I say the edges I actually mean go over everything. Of course we want this to be softly blended but we don't need to worry about how messy it is. So we want it to be blended but it can be messy. Now I'm going to take another Makeup Geek eyeshadow. This is a purple one called Curfew. Taking that on the same brush and working it into just above the crease, particularly if you have hooded eyes, taking it into the crease as well. You have to work it above the crease with hooded eyes, otherwise when you're looking straight on you won't be able to see it at all. And what would be the point in that? And I'm being pretty heavy handed, I'm not too worried about how much product I'm getting on my brush. I'm not being too pedantic about where I'm placing it, just getting it in the general area. Taking it on the lower lash line too, 
just not bringing it quite as far down as the other shadow. With the placement of this one, I'm not winging it out quite as much, but I will be blending out in that direction. And with all of the shadows, I'm leaving this nice, white, bright place here because I have quite small eyes and that's just gonna make sure that they stay a bit more open and I don't close them right off. Once you've got some nice, punched in the face eyes, then you can blend out that too. Okay, at this point I'm going to take a black eyeliner and just tight line my top waterline just because it can be distracting if you can see skin showing through. So I'm going to put a glitter glue primer down and then put glitter on the lid just because I noticed when I was swatching the glitter on my hand that it wasn't that opaque and I definitely don't want any skin shining through whatsoever on the lid. I'm going to take a shimmery shade and just put that down there first. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use another makeup geek shadow. This one is called Charmed. I might even just take that on my finger and just get that on here. Going back in with the Eco Tools brush and blending a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit more purple, deepen up this crease, or in my case, faux crease because it's actually slightly above my crease. I got this little Too Faced Tis the Season to Sparkle set which just came with their glitter glue and four little sparkle pots. I'm going to use the small blackish pot called Starry Night. I'm going to take that on this flat concealer brush. Basically, we're going to go all over the top of that silver shadow, slightly above where my crease ends because I'm sort of creating the illusion that my eyelid is a little bit bigger than it is. Taking the glitter on a flat shader brush or a in my case, this concealer brush. And we're really going to pack that on, which is why it's fine that it's going to cause fallout all over the face. Doesn't matter. Okay, so now I'm going to go back into the darker purple shade with a pencil brush. And I'm just going to sort of deepen up the line above where the silver glitter starts. And as we bring this down, when you hit about here, start to straighten out a little bit. So don't follow that curve all the way down. And you're going to sort of do the same thing on the outside by winging it out once you get to about here, rather than following it all the way down the curve as well. Do your best to get them as even as possible. Don't worry about the fact that you look like an absolute clown at this point. Okay, after you've painstakingly drawn that out a bit, wipe off the excess of the brush, go back into the lighter purple on the same brush and just very carefully get the top edge. Now we're going to blend. Don't touch the silver if you can manage it. And now we're going to go back on that pencil brush into a black shade. Any black shade will do. I'm just deepening this line a little bit further. The eyes start to feel like they've got 10 ton of eyeshadow on them. They do. And now we're going to run black along the lower lash line on the small pencil brush. We go close to all the way in, but not quite. Now we're going back into the lightest purple shade and smudging out along here further. For lining the lower waterline, I have a Chanel Stilo U, of course, and it's in the shade 926 Purple Chalk. I want the actual inner waterline to be darker than that, so I'm going to go back in with the black from the <clears throat> the black that we used at the top waterline, which mine was actually a Yves Saint Laurent. Oh, Yves Saint Laurent. All right, so we're going to leave the eyes there for now and um, put the rest of the face on so that we can stop looking like absolute maniacs and I can start taking myself seriously. <laughs> I cannot right now. So take yourself a wet wipe or whatever it is that you fancy using to just tidy up everything. And this is your opportunity to get the shadow in the shape 
that you want it. My light first and foremost to make sure that you get rid of all the glitter. Then you want to really just get this in the shape that you want it. I don't want mine to be too sharp, but I am sweeping it up. So I am sort of cleaning up that line a bit. I'm going to prime my face using the Benefit Professionals Primer. Concentrate that particularly in the T-zone, but generally just everywhere as well. I'm going to go back in with the concealer and just kind of do this, you know, triangle. And I'm going to take it just up in there as well. I'm going to be very generous, like this is going to be full coverage because it's just a personal opinion, but I think that when you've got really heavy eye makeup, full coverage is good. I like full coverage anyway, but particularly. And she's a smidge too dark for me, but we're going to make that work. Uh, this is Estee Lauder Double Wear. This is an Yves Lomme The Powder Brush, which is a really nice foundation brush. It's my favourite brush for foundation. I generally prefer a beauty blender for full coverage, but if I am using a brush, this will be the one. Yeah, that's looking nice and appropriately cake-faced. I didn't go too close up to my eye makeup with a larger brush because you just don't have enough precision. So you'll need to take a smaller brush. This is a Tarte concealer brush so that you can get up here and blend this in without disturbing your eye makeup too much. And we'll come back and blend the lower lash line, so don't worry about that. Now I'm just gonna do some contouring. This is a small e.l.f. stipple brush, the brown shade from this Tarte Rainforest C palette. Create ourselves some nice chiseled shadow. I'm gonna set all over my face with the RMCA New Color Powder. just using a nude by nature brush to do that. I get very oily so I'm quite generous especially for an event. I'm using the Hula Fit, Hula, <laughs> the Benefit Hula bronzer. I'm using this as more of a powder contour over the top. Using Max Ginger Lily as a blush. Concentrating that mostly sort of from here upwards. I don't like to take it too far down onto the apples of my cheeks. And then I'm using the Hourglass Bronzer in Luminous Light. The Balm Mary Luminizer. And absolutely smash my face in this. Mm. Doing a nice C around the eye. Do a little on the nose teeny bit on the tip. I don't like disco tips, personally. I love a really good Cupid's bow highlight though. And just a teeny bit above the eyebrow. After I put it all on, I'll go back around with the powder brush and even just a little bit of translucent powder on it. And I'll blend it all in. I do that after I put it all on so that I can sort of blend it all together. Give everything a really good blend. And then I take um, my Real Techniques sponge, just dry. And the only reason I take this is because it's got a good angle for it. And I just clean up the contour bronzer. I don't do this all the time. <laughs> I do this for events. Like, this is a lot of makeup. So I'll just brush that off. And look at me, I'm tidier. Now we've got to fix the eyes. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is just make sure that the top of my eye shape is exactly how I want it. I'm going to go back in with the very first thing that we did, which is the white powder. And I'm just going to get in here a little bit and tidy this up. So now I'm going to blend out underneath here. So basically just blend everything out and get it all even and back to scratch. <laughs> you guys probably won't see it because I'm going to eat at the bajeep. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. You guys probably won't see it because I'm going to edit this. 
massively. I'm going to have to. But this is probably one of the longest tutorials I've ever filmed. I guess because I'm doing my face as well. But... Ugh. I just had to go and make myself a coffee. Get through it. So we've come a long way. We're looking pretty good. Ah, oh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do my brows off camera. So I just highlighted my brow bone with Makeup Geek Rockstar and my inner corner. I'm definitely going to wear falsies with this look. I would not, not, <laughs> we've come this far. Because of that, it's a good idea to line your top lash line with black. I'm using a gel eyeliner. This one's by Estee Lauder, just on an angled eyeliner brush. And I'm not doing a wing or even a line at all. Just making it thin as I can, but giving the lashes something to blend into. Just, it makes um, your false eyelashes look quite a lot better. Now I'm gonna put on some mascara. I've got the Tarte Lights Camera Flashes. I'm not doing my bottom lashes yet because I haven't quite finished with my lower lash line, but you could certainly leave this look right here, put on your falsies and carry on to the lip. So I'm gonna take the Stila Magnificent Metals eyeshadow and this one's in Diamond Dust. These are absolutely great. I don't know how many times I can say it. <laughs> the best, easiest glitter ever. And I'm gonna start in the middle of my lower lash line. Sort of not right up against the lashes. And I'm doing such a light hand that I just wanted to sort of do those glittery teeth. Only little ones, only baby glitter tears. Now I'm just going to have a sip of my coffee. Okay, now putting the mascara on the lower lashes. I don't know why, but the uh, idea of crying glitter just really appeals to me. Falsies. <laughs> I can say, thank God, that that is finally the eyes done. And now just make sure that if you have any glue at the top showing, you go back over it with your black eyeliner. As the theme is purple, I've got a purple lip liner and a purple liquid lipstick. Well, mauve, anyway. Um, I'm using the Steeler Stay All Day Liquid Lip in Aria. And I've just got this, God knows what it is, lip liner style line and seal. Just gonna line my lips. Now unless you guys are new to my channel, you know I like to clean up a bold lip with a concealer and a very fine concealer brush. I think it's a good thing to do. You made it. <laughs> so now I'm gonna set my face, of course. To do that, I'm gonna use Cover FX Illuminating Setting Spray because I figure New Year's Eve, the more sparkle, the merrier. That's certainly how I feel about it. And that <laughs> completes the makeup, thank goodness. All right, guys, this is the completed look. This did take me quite a while to do, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if it's just because I felt like I had the time, so I took the time, or if this was actually something that just took me ages. <laughs> I don't know. But I do really like the way that it came out. Um, this is definitely something that I actually would wear on New Year's Eve. And let me know, would you wear a look this bold for New Year's Eve? Or would you wear something like this? Or what do you like to wear for New Year's Eve? Just talk to me. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you in my next video. I'm losing the light. And to do that, I'm gonna use the cover. <laughs> God, why can't I think of what I'm saying? <sighs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for being here. I'll see you in my next video.